Now the MPV has been around for many, many moons, and that reminds you of things like the Picasso and the Scenic. Now one that was rather late to the game, the BMW Active Tourer. Now the first Active Tourer came out in around 2014. Well it's one of those cars that's never really appealed to me, and that was until, I think it was about a week ago. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. Now the BMW 2 Series Active Tourer suits so many applications. It's perfect for the family, it's roomy, it's well equipped, it's even got tech out the i4 and the iX. But it's also got a dark side too, meaning you can go for M Sport. You get a tighter steering rack, so it's got 216 brake horsepower. So it pulls 0 to 60 in 7 seconds, delivers around 45 to the gallon, and it's lowered 15 mil. I mean, you'll probably know that we used to own a Zara Picasso. But to get back behind the wheel of something that's aimed at that market, wow, it's spot on, it really is. Now, before I ask the question, is this the ultimate subcompact? Well, the only way to find that out is to take it on a decent journey. So we're going to head down to the SMMT test day, and that's around 200 miles. That will give me a feel of what it's like on the motorways, and also some roads that I'm not familiar with. Now, it's changed a fair bit. It's been completely re-engineered. It's actually taller, wider and longer than the previous gen. And they've done so much work to this car, they've even undersealed the body, which means that it's actually got air channels to reduce drag, which means it's far more efficient. And this is a 223i with 216 brake horsepower, four cylinder with a twin scroll turbocharger and an electric motor, 19 brake horsepower. It gets a seven speed gearbox with dual plate clutch and it tops out at 150 miles per hour. Now our model's £41,500, but believe it or not, you can pick one up for just over 30 grand. Now you don't need to go for M Sport, I mean that's always the one that I'd choose, especially in Ultimate. But you can get a Sport and you can get a Luxury. It's such a sleek looking machine, especially in Sapphire Black. And the proportions, yeah they've got this car spot on. It has such an understated look. I mean, when you look a little deeper, you can see it's quite an aggressive bumper. And just look at the sweep. Because we've got the M Sport, we have this front apron. And there's actual airflow here. It's also got some kind of technology behind the grill that I don't know if it increases efficiency, but it opens up flaps to allow it to be better. Everything, I suppose, has its purpose. The combination of the finishes and the materials just make the front stand out especially with the new grill. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but I think it lends itself very well to this. But the bottom line is the kidney grill's been on the BMW for many years, and it is a symbol of the brand, and it always will be. We've got automatic lights, they're adaptive, and the matrix. You've got one for motorway, rain, and there's some other settings. Now, depending on the trim, depends on which lights you get. But they're all LED, they're all automatic, and they all have high beam assist. Now this boasts a fair old safety suite. Everything from active to passive, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, it's even got things like front cross traffic alert, and pretty much everything in between. You've also got 360 cameras and parking sensors. It's not too overdone. Subtle side skirts, the little M emblems. Even the 19s look right. But if that's not your bag, you could go for something like the 17s. And as we've got an M Sport, We've got adaptive suspension. So even with 19s, it's a nice, comfortable, pliable ride, but it does feel like it's glued to the road. Electrically adjusted power folding door mirrors, and they're heated. And get this, they auto dim. I don't think I've seen that on a subcompact ever. Keyless entry. And the door opens nice and wide. And immediately, the refinement in a BMW is unmistakable. The blue stitching, soft touches, an electric seat. And yes, it does have massage. And the interesting thing about BMWs is you can individualize them. So believe it or not, if you go for say, the entry level, you can add massaging seats. How cool. Simplicity to climb into. And I have a grab handle. This looks so sinister with a black roof. But you don't have to go for this, you can lighten up the interior. I've got some shortcut buttons here, and the mix of materials. If you're a tactile person, you'll love this. Satisfying clunk time. Well, it's certainly futuristic in here, but it's not overwhelming, and I suppose that's key. 
and it's so different to the previous gen. For a start, you had analog clocks and an infotainment here. Instead, now you've got the i4 and the iX screens. We've got a digital cluster here. You can see lots of information, including what your powertrain's doing, your economy, your DAB. You can even put the navigation there. Now you see that we've got the 360 camera, but we've also got assisted parking as well. So I think it's something like 50 yards it can reverse. So it retraces where you've driven. I can steer the camera with my steering wheel. 360, so you've got all these views as well. Heads up display, and that's optional, and that gives you a wealth of information too. Now the infotainment's got your obligatory Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and you can set some of the car's settings. And it's got satellite navigation. And it's a bit different to what you're used to. It's what you'd call augmented. What it does is film the road real time, and then it displays it on this screen and then it overlays things like arrows and the system works seamlessly. Now you've got dual zone climate control and if you go into the climate menu, you can also heat your steering wheel and your seats. Now when you start delving deeper into this, it's amazing what you can control. No rotary dials, but I found a way around that. Hello BMW, what is my oil level? Engine oil level is okay. Hello BMW, can you lower my driver's window please? Please first set vehicle ready to drive. So she can. The car can also recognise things like procedures. So if you go to, say, a car park and have to put your window down to get the ticket, the car will actually remember that and put the window down when you get there. A bit like a Tesla. We've got the uprated sound system. It's Harman Kardon and it comes with 12 speakers and that'll cost around £600 and it's well worth the money. Seats. Well, they look the part. They're comfortable, they're supportive. We've got blue stitching for M Sport and premium materials. I've even got massage on mine and they're both electric. Now the seat is on the floor and as you can see I've got ample headroom at six foot three so no problems there. I've got M Sport pedals and there's a footrest on the left hand side. It's a comfortable driving position. I've got this center armrest and a padded area here. This is an interior camera and you can use it to take selfies on your adventures. I never thought I'd see that. Panoramic with a dual layer blind and you can operate it with voice or with the buttons. There's a fair bit of storage when you start looking around here. Two cup holders, your wireless charging pad and storage points under here and here. Decent door pocket too. And don't forget the glove box. Let's have a clamber into the back. Door opens nice and wide, and wow, that's surprising. Didn't expect to find a hard plastic in the back, but you've got a padded area. It's very well trimmed. Good build quality throughout on this car. Stepping in, well, that's nice and easy. I don't really need to dip my head either. And a grab handle. Considering it's a black interior, it's still quite light and airy. But you've got a decent back window, so that lets a fair bit of light in. Also, these windows are quite tall. And if I want extra light, I can just open the blind. Considering this is set up for me, you can tell that they've made this area larger. Because I did read that you've got more knee room, and you really have. And you can get your feet under the seats. Interestingly, if I lean right back, my hair does brush. But it is extra floofy today sat like this no problem and if I remember correctly these will slide I think it's about 13 centimeters so that means you can seriously increase the space in your boot one thing I have just noticed and this would affect Annabelle is the fact that you can't adjust where the front seat belt is I like the way that this is trimmed you've got the M Sport blue stitch in oh I love this emblem of M Sport here yeah, they're not the most buckety seats in the world, but they do the job. They're comfortable and they're supportive. And I can recline my seat. Pull this strap here or there. I've got Isofix points, airbags around the vehicle, storage point here and micro USB. And we have some vents. Decent door pocket too. This is perfectly suited to four people. Five people at a push, but no. Very impressive. 
I've just noticed that these rear seats are quite elevated, so I've got a clear view straight out the windscreen. Well, we're just about to embark on our journey. Hands-free tailgate, fully laden. Decent size. We've got a suitcase in here, some of our camera gear. And there's also extra storage on the left and the right hand side. A little boot light. And as I mentioned before, dependent on where the seats are positioned, depends on how big the boot is. If you go for a FEV, the boot will be slightly smaller. When we drop the seats, you can see it gets pretty damn big. Quite easily get a mountain bike in there and some large items. Under the floor, we've got some extra storage and there's an inflation kit. It even closes hands free. What a rather tasteful back end. Big chunky bumper and this styling here. And because we've got the M Sport, we've also got this L shape in the rear LEDs. Beastie spoiler, but rather understated at the same time. And even the shark fin's subtle. 360 camera, parking sensors, and you've got things like rear cross traffic alert. And one thing that I find surprising, there's no visible exhausts. So we're just pulling out of the drive on our 200 mile journey. We're heading towards Luton. He came around fast, didn't he? Yes, he did. Welcome behind the wheel of the new BMW 223i. Under the bonnet we've got a 2 litre turbocharged engine, it's twin scroll and it's four cylinder. It's also mild hybrid. So we've got a 19 brake horsepower electric motor and a small electric battery. And the way that you charge the battery is by coasting and backing off and that kind of thing. Now if Annabelle pans left now you'll see what this little puppy can do. 216 horsepower. Seven speed dual plate clutch, and wow, it handles like it's on rails. Considering its size, it's very, very agile. But because we've got the M car, we've also got adaptive suspension. And my word, it makes it comfortable, yet grips. And yes, you can hear a bit of engine noise, but that's obviously artificial sound that's pumped into the cabin. Now just so you know, that was sport mode. I also knocked the gearbox into sport, which you do by knocking the shifter back. So economy, dependent on which engine you go for, I think this, even me driving similar to that pretty much all the time, I'm getting about 41 to the gallon. So yeah. It's rather economical, but it's engaging. 0 to 60 in 7. And Annabelle is grimacing now because it's that quick. That's a combination of an electric motor and a petrol engine with a turbocharger. Steering. Well, because we've got an M Sport car, we've got an even tighter rack. So it's, it's so direct. It's agile, but wow, the feedback. We've got serious overwatch on this as well. So you've got pedestrian and bicycle detection, AEB, mitigation, alert left, right and center, cameras that are reading everything. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty teched up. And one thing that's been added to these as well, as I mentioned the interior, you've got OS8. Now that gives you all that functionality, but it also gives you the camera recorders as well. So each camera, say there's a collision, it will record, I think it's, 20 seconds before and 20 seconds after. You've got good visibility through the windscreen and if you've noticed the side windows are quite tall too. The refinement in the cabin is pretty good. You get it on nice pieces of motorway and it goes almost silent. No wind noise to speak of or tyre noise which is quite strange considering we've got 19s power on the motorway, even at 60, 70 miles an hour, you put your foot down and whoosh your Nino. Absolutely no problem getting out of trouble. Now it's a comfortable ride, and that's whether you're driving or a passenger. And with the adaptive, it just makes it far more sure-footed. 
you don't really expect that from an active Taurus, especially because of its dimensions and also its proportions. But I found that with the X2. That could stick to roads like glue. This is pretty much the same. The other thing about it is it doesn't tend to wheel spin. Yeah, if you've got it on something like gravel, but when you've got it on tarmac or anything like that, it'll just dig its heels in and, and go. <laughs> it's just not what you expect from a family MPV. Joining that motorway was just not a problem, was it? <laughs> We're topping out at 150 miles an hour. Well, it's not surprising. No, it's a fantastic car, this. It's comfortable, it's roomy, it's got the power. And it's absolutely loaded with safety and economy. It's far better than you give it credit for. I, mean, I don't think 45 to 50 to the gallon is bad to be honest, considering you've got 216 horsepower. 